in the family that I grew up in, I had no choice. I came to Texas. What about you? It was not when you grow up and go to college. It was when you grow up and go to Texas. The love of UT started with our grandfather. You have never seen any person that loved the University of Texas more than he did. And you've got to realize, he was not a wealthy man. And so he was so interested in education. And remember, we're talking early 1900s. So he was actually a superintendent of a small town in Texas of their schools. And this friend of his that started the UT band was writing him all the time, was sending him the Daily Texan, which was, what was it called then? It was just the Texan because it was once a week. And he saved his money for three or four years to make sure that he could come to the University of Texas to law school and the music. Oh, he always said he wasn't very good at it, but he loved it. And so when he first got here, he was concerned about that, that UT didn't have a Texas song. The uh, band, they all performed songs that they borrowed from other universities. They didn't have a song unique to Texas, not only the university, but just to the state. He knew he didn't have the talent to write the song. So he started inquiring with before he got here on who could do that. He um, convinced Sinclair, John Lang Sinclair, that he was the one to do it. I think our grandfather and Sinclair were almost best friends. And Sinclair, as what we were always told, was he had more of of the ability to write poems, to write that type where our grandfather was more kind of a classic writer. So um, Lewis uh, Johnson, our grandfather, and Sinclair actually worked together for three different songs to get to the point to that uh, the song that we sing today was created. So this is one of the favorite things, artifacts that I've gotten from my grandfather. This is the doorknob from B Hall, from the closet where John Sinclair was locked in with his banjo. Our grandfather had this ability to say, Mr. Sinclair, you're gonna go in that closet and finish the song that we've started because I can't do it and you can't come out until it's finished. And it was Jolly Students of America and they changed it to Jolly Students of uh, the Varsity. It was a really good thing that the Eyes of Texas came next because this students really didn't want to be stuck with that song. <laughs> their, their writing skills got better. So anyway, there are two versions of the Eyes of Texas. They were performed and written and presented within a couple of months of each other. The first one was performed at the Minstrel and the students really, really liked it because it was, it was theirs. It was created for, um, for the students of Texas. And it was a tune, I mean, he wasn't a professional musician. It was a tune that he could remember and that he could play and that it was easy. It was, it was, easy, was easy to easy. play and easy to teach. To right, play. yeah. right. The second version, which was the revision of the first one, was in protest of uh, Colonel Prather, the president of the university, because he did something that the students were protesting that students didn't like. And the first time that it was sung was at Prather's house, and everybody expected him not to like it, and he did like it. So that was in 1903, and Prather didn't live much longer. In that short time, it changed from a protest or a jest and changed into a re revered hymn or something and, and that we all respected. And that just totally surprised him. He, would ne he did not expect that. He began to understand the magnitude, and it just kept getting sung by more and more people. And he was amazed at how important it became and honored and enjoyed every moment of it. I think the eyes of Texas meant to our granddad, our faculty, our students, our teachers, we're going to be watching you so that you can show the world what a good educational system the University of Texas has. It has been such a pleasure for Diane and I to have this as part of our history. And then this controversy came up lately. We're heartbroken. 
we so much don't want it to be a negative th in anyone's life. And we need to learn from that too. I, I want to be as gracious in my life and as gracious in teaching the history to my grandchildren as I can possibly be, but I want to be in, informed and listen to how other groups of people maybe don't have the same reality that I do. I need to be a little more humble. I need to learn more. The music was his love. To have our baby university have something of its own was his intent, I believe, from the depth of my heart. After rereading all of this stuff from my grandfather and trying to remember everything our dad said, that the good within this song still is there and can persist. The faculty, the students, the teachers, we're all still watching you. We're all still at the place that what starts here changes the world. Exactly. <laughs>